Next cast, they like this initial splash. There we go. A couple are gonna rush over to it, got a bite. He's on. Guys, it is a beautiful day in East Texas. We are actually out fishing a private water fishing property where you get to fish a lake all to yourself for the entire day. The place is completely private, totally yours. Let me tell you what, this is the Sandy Creek Ranch property out in Winsboro, Texas. It looks absolutely amazing. There's a grass line running all the way around this eight acre lake. Beautiful scenery with the trees surrounding this place. They've got a dock and a concrete boat ramp for you guys so you can launch uh, any size boat really, as well as your John Boats kayaks. And there's some bank access, but you're gonna be a little limited here. So if you guys are interested in fishing a property like this for yourself with PWF, you can actually get $50 off your initiation fees with code Weston at checkout. Something to look into if you wanna get on some private water. But Devin and I, she's behind the camera, are gonna get to fishing. Zeke the boat dog is here with us. We are on the hot tamale today. We got live scope running and it looks like the fish are in the grass. We're in eight and a half foot of depth right here. I am ready to get fish and we'll probably start off by working the banks a little bit. Ooh. Got Frogfish. And then we'll make our way out deep if we have to. Uh, we're about 13 feet of water right now. Picked up the Texas rig, cast it right in there, and this guy picked it up. But I have a feeling the fish in here, it's 75 degree water temps are probably post spawn and pretty aggressive, as has been the case the last few outings with us here in the Texas water. We've got so much stuff tied on Texas rigs, swim baits, crank baits, uh, finesse, you name it. We're going to go ahead and just start casting a line, see what hits first. Stay tuned. What are we sitting in? <sighs> Oh, two feet of water. Three and eight. Five eight. Okay, it's getting deep quick. I like that. I'm just gonna. Oh, yep, yep. There we go. Crank bait. He's on. Don't think it's a big fish, but I could be wrong. Not bad at all, Zeke. Look at that. That was quick. Uh, hold on, no, no, not the treble hook. He bit the lure, but then he got side hooked as he flipped, so he was actually gonna get off the hook right there. See what I'm talking about? You can rip those treble hooks right out of the skin. He's barely hooked, you guys, so that's why you wanna have a rod with a little forgiveness. If I was using something like a muscle rod, something with an extra fast tip, we would have definitely lost that fish. We would have ripped that hook right out of there. Reaction rods or crankbait style rods are your friends. If you guys wanna grab a Guggen Squad rod, you can add a discount with code Weston at checkout on GuggenSquad.com. Camp is Zeke. It's the first fish of the day, buddy. Bass under 14 inches out of here this one's looking like it might be right at it so we're gonna let him go see you bud well, it is literally like 68 degrees out here and the water temps are 75 so it's hotter in the water like a jacuzzi compared to the outside ambient temps this water clarity is very clear today so they should be able to see this stuff from a mile away shallow diver and yet i'm still catching just a little bit of grass so if that is the case when you're fishing these square bills you know for one you could either just cast out into some deeper water but if they're up shallow and you still want to throw that crankbait i'd recommend something like a lipless so you can keep it closer to the surface or you can just kind of rip that grass off of there which kind of gets caught on the bills of these square bill crankbaits these divers otherwise you might even roll with something like a clickbait swim jig things of that nature just kind of switch the uh, lure up entirely but let me see if I can get another bite on this crankbait real fast. Oh, he chased it all the way to the boat. Woo! There we go. That might be a, well, it might be grass. Nope, that's a fish. All right. <laughs> this one's pretty good too. Look, he's got some fight. All right, they got some fight out here. Nice. Oh, wow. Hey, Zeke. Ah, that's number two in the boat. See you, bud. I think we're going to opt for a, uh, a big bait real quick. There's a five pounder in here. You'll find it with this thing. You're on? You got one? Oh, she does have one. Saucy swimmer, first one. Sick. First one under 14 inches going in the live well, y'all. You're supposed to cull them. So whenever we got the big bass boat on one of these properties, uh, what that means is you remove those smaller bass to give more food opportunity to the larger ones and ultimately make a better fishery for the private water fishing members. So you're really catching a lot of those big fish. So anything under 14 inches, we are going to be removing from the pond. And this one looks above 14. I'll tell you that, that nice little flash right there. He just, uh, Whoa, he wasn't fighting hard at first, but now he's got some pull. Oh, 
Oh, there we go. That's like a three and a half, maybe. I got this light rod. Do you have the net, babe? This is what you want to see, and that's why we're removing some of those smaller ones. And there we go. That's a good one. That's a good one. Hey, Zeke, get away from those trebles. <laughs> Did you get that on camera? If Zeke will let you guys see this thing, he's probably closing in on three pounds. Might be a little above it. You're gonna need to simmer down, sir. This is not your vlog. You're just, you're the guest on the boat. Hey, now hold on. You're the co-star. Sit, good boy. So where were we? Nice plump bass out of this place, y'all. Private water fishing. Zeke, simmer down now. Simmer down. Got him. Devin's first one on the crank. Woo, in fact, the bite's been so hot, we tied on another one. I got out the gold series reaction rod now. That's a nice two pounder for sure. Heck yeah. Uh, she's gonna spot lock it. I'm gonna hit that same little zone. Crankbaits today, sexy shad color for the win. This is the banger crankbaits, y'all. She's throwing the banger and I threw the, I have the grande banger tied on now because I think that's all we've got in the boat. So literally they have the same diving depth of two to five feet, just a little bit larger size than that one we've been throwing. Oh yeah, he was not going anywhere. Got one. We're doubled. Doubled up. That was fast. Sick. All right, man. Devin's is good, but this one is going to go in the live well to get removed so we can keep those larger guys in the water for you. Live well for this dude. Oh, there we go. That was right off the bat. Nice. Oh, very nice. Quick release. Oh, they're out here. bottom oh that's coming for you or me oh he got it i was about to say saw that saw him eat it that was sick oh that's a monster crappie that's all crappie right there wow it is all crappie my goodness we just called that catch on live scope y'all they are hanging out in about six foot of water just on some i don't know if that's grass like sparse grass or if it's maybe even some uh, some trees some timber there but that is what the bass are eating out here okay we're gonna put him in the live well you can keep the uh, catfish and crappie out of this location as well oh they're coming for you ah got him got crappie. Him. crappie whoa <laughs> smoke in the oh my gosh what the heck i saw it on lime scope those even. things are huge oh something's chasing one of us i think it's you because you're further out yep 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 oh that might be a is that a, that's a crappie golly these are just huge these are huge. Every one of them is like, every one of them is a pound. It like, we called that one too. We see him chasing the cranks on this thing. It's so sick. It's Big Tuesday. Taco Tuesday. Uh -oh. oh. I just ran through the school. I feel like I've got some weight. I might have one too, babe. Here we go. This one might be another crappie, oh another giant. Oh my. Here, let me get another picture. We doubled up on bass. Now we're doubled up on crappie. Watch Zeke. <laughs> I'll get on. Oh, no, stuff is to the If we go that way, I think there's more suspended. That one to the left a little bit. Got him. Got to be a crappie. Oh, bass. Oh, bass. Nice. <laughs> Wait. No, Wait. No, it's Whoa. A the biggest crappie of the day. So Honestly, good. your first one was like that big. <laughs> Woo. Spotting them on the live scope today. This is sick. Live scope and crappie. That oh, actually bass. might be a bass, but what's funny is it's not even as big as the crappie. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Aww, little the baby. littlest guy of the day. Well, to be fair, we haven't caught many that small. They've yeah. all been pretty good size. That's the first That's dink true. and he's still plump. We have found the frog box, ladies and gentlemen. I usually go with the white belly for clear water, dark for like stained water. But then also people have brought up different instances, like maybe with the clouds, maybe y'all can fill me in with what's best if it's cloudy and overcast. I, I think just the, the silhouette of the black belly stands out more. So, you know, there's that. And we also got like the bullfrog, check that pattern out. So if you know there's a lot of bullfrogs in your area, we got sort of a flashy like bluegill almost uh, pattern. And then we've got this guy right here. He's kind of a tan. I mean, we have options and we have a, a mixture of the walk-in and pop-in, I believe. So here we go. Here's the difference there. Uh, let me show you the same color so you get a good example. So this is the walking frog, right? The filthy frog. And this is the popping filthy frog. You'll notice the difference on the nose there. So this guy, maybe if it's a little bit more choppy and not as calm, I'd use him and I'd pop him and he's going to push more water out and draw those fish in usually from further away. Could be good today, but I just kind of want to walk one. And, and what I mean by that is when you have the frog go like this, right? As you're bringing it in. And what that means is you can kind of leave him in the strike zone a little bit longer. Usually those popping frogs are coming straight at you versus these guys where you can kind of work a little bit slower. And when I'm working thick grass, I like the idea 
of uh, keeping it in that spot for a little bit longer and allowing them to come up and hit it. So I'm going to go with the white one, which I think is the frog I have caught more fish on than any other frog in my lifetime of fishing. So we're going to toss this guy in. He has been chewed up and does not miss many hook sets. So we'll see if we can get some top water today, or maybe I'm just going to not include this footage in the video at all. Anyways, hopefully you all enjoyed the frog tips, whether we catch anything on it or not. All right, y'all. So we gave the crappie a break. I was on the live scope. Weston was re-rigging a frog because towards the bank, it's really, really shallow, lots of grass. He was like, I bet I could get on a frog bite. So while he was re-rigging, I was messing around on the live scope, saw a dip. Oh, we're about 13 feet of water right now. Picked up the Texas rig, cast it right in there, and this guy picked it up. Definitely the biggest fish so far. Over three and a half, nice, 3.64. We were thinking maybe three and three quarters. It was a little shy of that, but I will take it. This girl is beating back up. Look at that belly. We're gonna go ahead and get her released and try and get a big one. Ooh. Got him, got him. Frogfish, nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh no no came off at the boat with a big fat head shake dang it just as suspected cloudy overcast conditions got smoked right out of the grass dudes so sick that makes me just want to hit every little inch of this stuff and draw them out oh got him got him he didn't even he didn't even like explode on it he just slurped it under I think that one's gonna go for 14 though. He's not too small. First one on the filthy frog. He was further out too. They're just in that grass and it comes so far out. Like I could get a hit out here. Oh, whoa, he like ran with it. How cool was that? Another one on the Texas rig for her. Uh, they are tearing that thing up, but that one's gonna be over 14 as well. So she's gonna toss him right back in. Here we go. I like this little zone right here. This is gonna be good. I'm working through some prime real estate right here. Got a little pocket right there, grass edges. Come on, eat the filthy frog, huh? Okay, you want to go into these little cuts? Oh, you got it? Oh, we'll come back and eat it. Something tiny must have hit that one. Took it under, but didn't get the hooks. I like this place. A big bass has got to be lurking right here. A nice little post spawner with its fry somewhere, maybe. I can tell you they're not gonna like this frog rolling by. Well, I could definitely throw something to get more bites back here. Got him. Texas rig? Yeah. Nice. I might do that baby bass. You're done with the Texas rig? Give me a second. Yeah, a Fish. First cast. It was dogging. It was running to, I think he's on still, yeah. He's swimming towards us, but his head's shaking. I can't tell if he's big or small. I'm like, what are we working with here? He's okay. He's okay. He's okay. Gosh, look how dark he is. Yeah, he's very dark. That's because he's hanging out in the grass. So I caught him right off that grass edge, just as Devin was telling me I should do. First cast of the day on the Texas rig for me, right after Devin sets this thing down because she's like, yeah, I caught some. I'm good on the Texas rig. I might throw something different. He's heavy. For how short he looks, he's heavy. He's going back in. He beats the 14 inch mark. So he is here to catch for you guys at Sandy Creek Ranch in Winsboro. Time for a new green pumpkin purple crack and crawl. This is the newest color to Guggen Baits, man, and it slays. Devin was throwing this and it's already caught like five or six fish today. So rig up another one. Any of this gear you wanna grab that I've been referencing today, guys, you always know we keep it down in the description. So check that out. We're throwing that on straight 50 pound braid. This is the Guggen Squad moss green braid as well as the uh, Guggen Squad four aught hammer hook and then a quarter ounce bullet weight here. Usually I throw a Wu tungsten, but I feel like this might not be a Wu weight. This might be one that was thrown in the mix because it's usually uh, the never chip ones that I get from Wu Tungsten. And this one's got a little chip there in the top. So if you want the perfect paint job, go with those Wu Tungsten never chips. I really like these handles. I kind of reached out and they sent us a bunch of the green ones to go with our Guggen rods. The guy's been so cool and generous. He even talked about sponsoring some future videos for us. So there could be a little partnership and collaboration in the future just because we like them. We're not paid or sponsored by Gomexis in any way. But before we grab these, the alternative was the DRTs. So we have these guys right here, but those are like 250 to $300 for a set of the handles. And then if you want custom knobs like these, I had to like go find them on eBay and they were like 50 bucks just for the knobs. It gets ridiculous, but you know, some of us like to customize our stuff and have a unique look. And so for that, there's a price to pay as well as the fact that you can kind of almost change the gear ratio of your reel. You've got more cranking power if you go with a larger handle. So that can kind of actually help you catch more fish or should I say land more fish. I think we should go back out to the deep water. Nice. Texas rig. And I think, oh, I was gonna, oh, big hop. We might be doubled up. That's a good fish. That's a nice one. Yep, come on. 
Come on. Should work. I've got either grass or a bass. I've got both. Your spot lock for a second because it's getting windy on us, y'all. It had been a moment since we got our last bite. We were way up in the corner over there, throwing a mixture of what's been hitting all day. Crankbait and Texas rig. And there's two more fish in the boat for you guys. I'm gonna put this guy in the well. He might, he's 14. Here, give me a little bit of slack. Yep. Nice fish. Ooh. Nice. See ya. All right, y'all, we're changing with the conditions. I keep catching grass on this thing, which means I need to just stay a little closer to the surface. It also just got very dark outside, cloudy and windy. And that means spinnerbait. Let's get this thing in the water. Keep this a little closer to the surface. Don't have to worry about that grass as much. Avoids most grass because it's got that V design on those spinner baits. You'll see all those blades and think it's just a whole school of little bait. They'll come up and eat the whole thing right out of the grass that I keep catching. They've been liking the shad color over here. It's all adding up. Oh, got him right by the boat. Oh! <laughs> got him. Spinner bait, maybe a bass, maybe a crappie. Big old crappie. The crappie are keyed in on the spinner bait now. And Devin has got a bass. No, I don't. No, you don't? This is a crappie. That's a crappie. Oh my. What the heck? Holy. <laughs> oh my gosh. Here, picture time. 1.90. Basically a two pound crappie. <laughs> that is insane. It's so deceiving too because you don't really know if it's a crappie or a bass until you get it like in the boat because these guys head shake and dig just like all of the bass. So freaking crazy cool. Went ahead and grabbed the biggest one out of the live well. We held on to her for just a little while, decided that we were gonna take some pictures, get her back in the water. There's two other ponds on site. So we're gonna get the boat loaded up and go take a look at those two. That ain't gonna fly. Not bad at all. All right. That is how you load the boat without the big motor, y'all. to the third pond with the boat in tow. It's a little bit of a bumpy ride. A handful of casts in linked up with this guy. This body of water would be absolutely perfect for kayaks. Let him go. But we're in the boat today and it's a little tough to cast from the bank. As you can see, it's got this thick grass like right at the edge, but we're gonna go ahead and give it a few more casts and probably call it on that. This pond right here, y'all, is loaded. Holy smokes. This is the one I saw the fishing report where the guy caught 90 just recently. And he was like, I didn't even want to leave. I think there's some bigger size in the pond that we fished, obviously, but I think there's some serious numbers and these guys are just so active over here in this little body of water. Like, watch this. I, I bet I can cast this thing out. They like this initial splash. There we go. A couple are gonna rush over to it, got a bite. He's on, he's on. It's a little guy. This one is so fun though, dude. Can you imagine if you're bringing the kiddos out here, if you got a little John boat, you got some kayaks, bring the family. Woo! And just have a good old time catching a ton of bass, man. That's what this property is all about. You actually, with your reservation, get an opportunity to fish any one of these three lakes you want to. So, we just figured we would make a little stroll down here and catch us a few before we split. Definitely best suited to some kayaks, I'll tell you that. You gotta rip them through this thick grass. This is just straight braid to this Texas rig, so you can really get through that stuff without having to worry about maybe snapping some fluorocarbon or monofilament and things like that if they get you really in there. And uh, yeah, 50 pound braid. Thanks again guys for tuning in. We'll catch you guys on the next one.